everybody welcome to the fire it up with cj show we have mark victor hansen and crystal dwyer here and they're talking about their newest book please show the book ask the bridge from your dreams to your destiny so congratulations on launching this book sounds like it's going incredibly well tell us a little bit about what's happening with the book now well what happened is that we Pre-COVID, we started to write this book, and then it came out just during COVID. The publisher said, well, why don't we just push it back, not knowing that COVID would last. Yeah. And what's happened is that God bless podcasts and Zoomcasts, and we've been on over 400 literally around the world. And, and, oh, and wow. uh, I, I don't know if that's a record or not. People tell us it is. So I, whether that is or not, the book sales just keep going like that because no one was ever taught how to ask cj you gotta ask we teach three things you, the funnels are you gotta ask yourself ask others and ask god seems mm -hmm. simple but no one ever delineated it i mean mm -hmm. all spiritual literature talks about asking and you got to become a master so we even created askthebookclub.com so we could help source and serve mm -hmm. everyone to become master askers how's that mm. Okay, so actually, let's just break that down. So you need to ask others, yourself and God. So what would give us a sense of like, what are some types of things that people are asking for? Because you've had these Facebook groups, people messaging, what kind of things are people asking for? And, and how would they ask themselves, others and God? Right. So just starting with the asking yourself part, because really everything starts with that. I mean, we cannot, um, asking yourself is that reflective journey. And so few people take the time to do it. You know, they kind of live their lives and life is coming at them and they're kind of ducking and dodging and trying to keep all the balls up in the air. And they're taking all of their cues from all this outside stimulus when they don't realize that their life experiences is really created from the inside out. And if they just took the time to go inside get that journal, get what we call the asking journal and sit down with themselves and start asking some questions that will help them see where they are now, where they want to be, and what specific actions they're going to have to take to get there. And that all comes from a questioning process, that self-reflective, self-questioning process. Where am I right now? Are things really working? I'm I happy. Am I, do I feel internally that I'm on the right track? You know, if, and, and then where do I want to be? And we say, ask that from the nth degree of your greatest imagination, because there's nothing that's limiting you except you. And so often when we do take our cues from what we already have around us, we're not using our imagination at all. We're mm -hmm. just creating more of what we have. And often what we have is exactly what we don't want, but we keep recreating it because that's where the feedback's coming. So mm -hmm. going inside into this inner process of asking and say, in my ideal life, in my ideal career, what am I, what am I doing? Who am I working with? What kind of products or services am I sharing? And how are those um, impacting the people with whom I'm working or impacting the world? And, you know, and, and what delights me about it? What am I excited about every day in this ideal world that I want to be living, that I can be living? And in that way, when you start to ask those questions, backwards you can really engineer your perfect like life backwards but you have to get off the train for a minute and sit down with yourself and stop looking outside of your life and really focus on those internal questions what is it you where are you now where do you want to be truly in your heart of hearts in your greatest manifestations your greatest expressions and then what specific actions this is a huge question in self-reflection what specific actions do i need to take to get there because the minute you start you know asking yourself these questions you will get ideas ideas are going to come to you that you didn't realize were there you'll start to feel feel solutions you'll start to uh form a plan maybe but then you need to take action around what you're getting because you will receive those things but it's up to you that then to then write it down take the action pick up that person Who's, who just came to your, pick up the phone and call that person who just came to your mind. You know, all of those things are real communications from the universe mm. trying to provide you what you're asking for. Okay, well, let's try it out. So I've actually, over the last um, year and a half, I've become, I've done this inner contemplation. So I'm going to rattle off a bunch of stuff. 
okay. only because I've spent the last year and a half really getting super clear with what I want. So um, who I'd like to work with are um, organizations, um, ideally tech organizations. Um, what I'm excited about is to Basically, I feel like we're, there's so much a division nowadays, and I'm really trying to have people unify, come together, understand each other um, in, in the greatest sense of diversity, equity, inclusion, and, and, and in some ways, like just truly connecting together, connecting to themselves on their inside, connecting to each other, and then connecting to, I know it sounds extreme, but to the planet and to the life around us, the plants and the trees, et cetera. Absolutely. So that's what I would like to do. Um, what I would like to do is ha do that work, but not have it, um, have it be done from a spiritual place because I'm my background is in corporate, so I end up doing things a lot in production deadline mode versus creative, co-creative way. So that's how I'd like it to be. And the actions that I have taken have been, um, you know, we were getting a whole bunch of business coming in and clients coming in. It's just, it's just springing out of nowhere. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm having to like really be clear with like how much do I want without feeling overwhelmed and not to be in this constant and the last six months has just been in like just in the total making donuts mode like I have just never worked so hard in my life over the last six months and I don't know if I want the next six months to look like that okay so that's myself um, I've talked to my business partner, which is the others, but what, what else do you mean by others? And did, is that what you mean by yourself and what about others and what about God in this whole okay. asking? So I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to do God first, if you don't mind. Sure. Everything is God's. God created the universe. He created you and me, he created the planet, he created every star, every, you know, the whole e equals MC squared, all that. So I believe spirit runs the mental, which runs the physical, which runs our results. Mm -hmm. You prayed for it and you got it. And, and what happens is back to spirit. What we're teaching is you got to get definite with the infinite. So the infinite can get definite with you. Mm -hmm. If you want one client a day or 10 clients a day, universe doesn't care. There's remember there's 8 billion people. So there's no right. lack of potential business <laughs> as, right. as for technology. Technology is going like this, unless you tell me something I don't see, but whether it's Elon Musk, whether it's AT&T, whether it's Apple, everybody in technology is booming and, and it is unequivocally the future. And when I was in graduate school with Bucky Fuller, Einstein's best student, Bucky said, you know, we're gonna have education automation and, and people are gonna really have to do what Crystal was just saying, mm -hmm. think about what you're gonna do with your new self and make sure you put up the boundaries. So you're the happiest camper ever, like we are, beyond ecstatic that the book is selling everybody wants it everyone's reading it and we we visualize it we do a movie and all that but all that was spiritual we say we got to start every day the first let me do the preface to this it's in the book but we're sitting falling in love long and long ago in in uh costa mesa california at a mother's restaurant eating an ice cream meal man of the cloth clearly catholic looking he had white collar black outfit can't help but seeing how in love we are and says, uh, do you mind if I teach you something about how to stay married? I don't want to talk to you at all, Bubba, but okay. You know, I didn't say that to him. I wasn't right. rude. But I said, what is it? He says, look, I've been running Billy Graham Ministries for 70 years. I'm 92. He was, wow. Absolutely. He says, what we learned is you got to pray out loud with each other every night and every morning. Now we both prayed in groups. We prayed at, at Holy Man jams. We prayed in church. We prayed over funerals and eulogy, all kinds of stuff, but never out loud. So he said, "Well, wait a second. Not together, yeah. Not together out loud." So he said, "Why don't we do that?" So every morning we do that for uh, you know, and you might want to do it with your partner if he is spiritually willing to be connected. Everybody is spiritual. Some people tried to disconnect. You can't really disconnect from Big G. Big G says, I don't care what you call me. I don't care what you stomp on my foot, which I got a joke here I can tell if you want, but it, it probably then I shouldn't do jokes here. <laughs> the, the point is, is it is it we're in the most exciting time in human history. And yeah, there's some breakdown so we can have real breakthroughs. It's really a most magnificent time in history, but you need to be spiritually awake back to what you said. And even before we started the show, 
I don't know everybody that watched, you know, what did you do? You closed your eyes and, and you probably lined up all your heap energy zones, uh, you know, starting at the bottom with red and orange and yellow and green and, and blue and purple and then scotched yourself a white light, which is really like a smart idea. If you're, if you're spiritually evolved and evolving and have studied this kind of stuff, then you know what we're talking about. If you don't, maybe you got to go back to church, devil, synagogue, or ashram, or mosque, and learn a little bit more, or watch all our videos. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I just wanted to say, CJ, so you, you've gotten to this point where you've like pretty much defined, like you've decided what you want, and then things start to happen. You were describing that, like, so all of a sudden, you're just getting all of this feedback from the universe, like, and you're just find yourself working so hard. And so mm -hmm. that's, that is the point. Then you're like, well, wait a sec. Um, I don't know if I want to be this busy. So that's the journey. Like we have to keep refining with the next question. So this is wonderful. And I like whatever, I like the money I'm making. I like that, but how would it even be better? Like mm -hmm. if it, how would it feel better? Like if I could keep this, but maybe not work so hard, would that mean bringing another person in to collaborate with me? Would that just mean scaling back a little? What does that mean? Because mm. you go back to the universe with more questions mm. because all of the answers are there, right? Because right. you're always gonna fine tune. You'll get answers and then you'll correct, you'll fine tune and you'll correct course a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you cannot do this without constantly addressing it with questions, mm -hmm. you know, asking yeah. yourself, asking others, because we're all a resource to each other. You know, I said the um, asking yourself part is your reflective journey. So the asking other part is your bonding journey. Mm. It's how two or more human beings come together because there's no way any of us are going to do this life on our own. No way, no how, no, no matter what we, if we think we're a lone ranger and so many people do, and there's been a sense of loneliness with this, this whole COVID kind of being more isolated, working from home, but we can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. So, you know, sometimes we need to think about that more. Who do I need to reach out to? Who do I need to ask, you know, about their thoughts, their feelings, opinions, if there's something there, some person that I need to be collaborating with that would make this even better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have, I've done that. And I think it's, I think what I like is the idea of, of constant refinement. I mean, for me, the, the way that I'm operating now is I've just been asking God for like, how can I be of the highest service? And then I hear, and then, uh, and then I get stuff sent. Like you said, there's not like a filter, <laughs> a lot of stuff <laughs> sent and then thought, ah, okay, thank, God. <laughs> thank you, God. Thank you. <laughs> now I have to refine, maybe not as much. Like I want to be able to meditate in, in, in the morning where I first just go, oh, 10 minute meditation is, is fine enough because I'm too busy. You know, like those kinds of things are, it, it misses the whole mark, I think, because I want to be co-creating and I yes. co-creating means having the amount of time and space to take time to do a really nice meditation and to listen more every day. Um, so yeah, so I, I like the idea of co-creating and just continuing the dialogue. Um, I, 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 you, there are a whole bunch of things that you said in the book about good questions and how it takes time to ask good questions. How, tell us a little bit more about that. So when you're when you're praying and you're the two of you are praying together, do you ask questions together or are you just, um, you know? asking like, please bring me blah, blah, blah. I mean, what, what does the prayer look like when you're, when you're praying together or alone? I'm going to let her do the prayer, but I'll do the preface. How's that? Okay. And that, that is Einstein said, if I got a big problem and I don't know the exact question I spend out of, and I've only got one hour, I spend mm -hmm. 55 minutes thinking about what the question is and then five minutes to solve it. And, mm -hmm. and the same thing for us, when we uh, we obviously start with a crystal bowl to, to clean all the toxicity out of our body, whether it's mental, physical, social, spiritual, emotional, a person, or, you know, old habit patterns, all that stuff. And then once you're a, a clear channel and you open up some great 
things happen and I will let my beloved talk to that. Yeah. And I, I mean, if we're talking about techniques, like when we start our meditation, we don't like to do the box breathing where, you know, breathe in for six, hold for six, breathe out for six, hold for six, breathe in for six, hold for six, breathe out for six, hold for six. That really does clean, you know, sort of refresh your state of being mm -hmm. no matter what's really going on. But yeah, then Mark and I question each other. We do ask a lot of questions of mm. one another as we're like preparing for this before we go into our meditation. Because then we kind of, we'll kind of, uh, one of us will kind of guide in the beginning and then, and then we'll go into a quiet place where we start med meditating and praying, um, you know, with our own stuff. So it's, um, it's, it's really cool, but we, we, that morning meeting that we have, like that mm. morning meditation meeting is the most beautiful. Important part of our day. It's really, because, you know, what we, like, we have so much stuff coming at us all the time, like you, and it's wonderful. Like we have abundance and we have people and we have opportunities. And sometimes it's, it's so much that you need clarity. And I mean, you have to refine it and go, what is, is this, is this the direction we want to go? Does this fit in with our, um, you know, basically our value system, our plan mm -hmm. purpose, you need to really decide where your curbs and gutters are for your own life expression. And that, that starts to come to you as you start the asking yourself and asking God part, you really start to feel that like, what is my highest expression? If I were waking up every day, as the greatest version of me and going out there and living that and expressing that, what does that look like? And then you get a lot more clear when these things come up in life and you start to ask, um, you know, about those, those opportunities, it, you can, you can really refine those down. And, and sometimes you have to, it, it'll help you know what to say no to, or what to pair back on, mm. or what's just completely not a fit. I mean, we, I can't tell you the number of times we say no to these great opportunities that people come, oh, I've got this, I've got that, what about this? We're, we've become more clear than ever. I mean, it was so great for us to, to write this book because we knew the principles, but then when you get to share the principles, you know this, CJ, how you keep mm -hmm. growing in your own space mm -hmm. and, and you keep learning as mm -hmm. you're sharing. It's just so such a beautiful thing. But that has allowed us to just sculpt our lives in the best way ever it's just gotten better and better and then it's funny people think well oh i don't want to say you know a lot of oftentimes we get scared well if i say no to that you know i might be missing out on something it's really just the opposite once you've you know through questions and answers receiving the answers once you know your path you know who you want to be you basically given more specific directions to god's perfect universe to deliver just that thing. And mm. so you're going to get more of that thing. It'll get better and better and better. <laughs> I have the process in the morning where I wake up, I go through a meditation and then I have a list of literally 53 questions because I've interviewed all these people and they'll have book questions. I'm like, oh, I like that. And I'll pull it and I'll put it in my question list. Oh, wow. And so then, and then I muscle test on which questions I'm like, okay, inner soul, tell me which ones you'd want me to answer today. But I'm curious. So that's mine. And then I answer the questions that I get that I muscle test through this list of 53 questions. But how do you guys work with each other? Because as you said, Mark, the question is the most important thing. And it sounds like you go into a contemplation together. How, what does that look like in your household in the morning? <laughs> uh, we have a big house, obviously, and we got these two chairs that face each other and we're deciding whether it, let's say that it's a person that we're either going to excommunicate or, or incommunicate and stay with. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just, we just had somebody try to come into our life that didn't wasn't a fit, and we can't go there with you. But uh, so we had a, he got excommunicated. And and by the way, all of us this is what Crystal was saying, and it's the same thing with your nutrition. You know, we talk about what we can have and what we can't have, what we can drink, what we can't drink, whether our water is clear enough, whether our we're eating enough fresh fruits and vegetables, whether we're doing uh, vitamins. You know, so that's the physical part. The spiritual part is, is because yeah, I said the spiritual runs a mental, which runs a physical, runs your results. At least that's how I see it as a circle. And and we are really clear about what we're trying to do. And, and you know, whether it, it, if we ask ourselves, what is the way we want to handle our publisher when a publisher said, 
we're not going to publish because COVID and we're going to push back. We said, no, 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 no. That's not what we agreed today in our meditation. We've got to go through the book and we'll find, he said, well, how are you going to sell it? Because you can't get on TV unless you're a politician. I said, I never got on TV as a politician. I'm not ever going to get on TV. I mean, she's been offered lately to be a senator and a congressman. We said, no, that's not who we are. Because we really are clear on that. And I've been offered ambassadorships to countries. And I go, no, thank you. Right? I, I say, I appreciate it. But And what she's saying is the more you can say no, the more your life becomes full of what you do want and not mm. you want to live in what you don't want. Mm. And then when we meditate, and go into that secret place of the most high where you're really, you're in tune with the infinite, you're in tune with God. And you're asking these deep, profound questions. And back to what you said about listening, that's the other thing you got to ask and then listen. One of us, when we finally come out of meditation, you know, we uh, raise our hands up, let the infinite pour into us um, through this whole process. And then we debrief each other. Yeah. And what's amazing mm, is that our briefings are so profound I often say, well, let me just, we'll put it on and then we'll translate it with Otter AI or whatever. Yes, system I love use. Otter. And, and we love Otter, but because it, it, it's pretty clear and pretty good and, and about 90% accurate. Mm -hmm. Is it, it, Then we go over it and we say, look, either that's going to become a future YouTube, that's going to go into this book, that book. And we got a lot of books in process. Holy mm -hmm. smoly. Um, you know, because everyone says, well, did you really write 318 books? I really did. And I really sold a half billion books. I'm really number one bestseller in the world. So, but you know, the, the point is, is that because they haven't, I couldn't sell 500 out of my garage. That's not my fault. You know, if you'll really listen, like, I'll just tell you that a biography is being written on me now and somebody wrote up about how hard I worked to get to where I am. And it's, yeah. sort of, it's, it's a mind so blower, the story. <laughs> yeah. So true. Yeah. One, one thing I wanted to mention about what we were just talking about too, CJ, through this process, like, when, when you follow, when you start to, to understand the art and science of asking that we teach in the book, um, everything in your life starts to change. And I know you know this because you stop operating out of fear of loss. Mm -hmm. Because I'll tell you, just as a, as a you know, transformational life coach, most people operate out of fear of loss. Like, oh, if I don't do this or if I don't do that, I'm going to lose this. And so instead of operating from their highest values, they, they operate out of a fear of loss and there's no way you could ever make a good decision coming from that space. Mm -hmm. So as you start to take this asking journey and start to refine your life and your requests and your journey, you start to operate out of this really beautiful space that is just coming from your clearest intentions, mm -hmm. not this fear of loss or this fear of like missing out on this or this for you. Oh, what if I miss it? You know what? It's not about that at all. Mm. Just, if you stay in this path and stay in the journey, you will start operating from your highest, most noble, most rewarding intentions. They're, yeah. They are. They're so much more rewarding and ironically more prosperous. That's, that's sweet. That's at the sweet spot. And I know, you know, this where you've, your prosperity starts to pour in, you know? Mm -hmm. And how I, when I, um, I, I love the seven roadblocks because um, for asking, and I wanted to, I want you to share what they are and to kind of give us a sense of what they mean, because um, I do think that those are really important because sometimes we just, I actually have um, someone in my family that doesn't ask and, and, and I'm a radio interview. I ask everyone everything and i'm incredibly curious so i'm constantly asking this is not something that i think i have a problem with but i could i could see um the these think these seven roadblocks is really being an issue can you kind of describe what they are for people for so asking what, sorry we've got them in this order but first one is a sense of unworthiness and by the way all of us have some of them some of the time very few of us have, have solved all of them all of the time, and some of them pop up different times. So yes. unworthiness, you've got naivete, you've got excusology, you've got doubt, you've got fear, you've got pattern paralysis where you keep doing the same thing and expecting mm. a new result. And then you've got disconnection. We mm. go into all, any one of them, and we've got stories. As you know, when we did the book, we wrote everything we knew, then we 
check out all the top universities from Harvard to Cambridge to, Studies. you know, Bavon's College, all that. And then what we did is we interviewed 26 superstar askers, mm. literally, that we've met around the world as we've traveled. And they all gave us these profound stories. And you go, wow, because everybody needs to learn to become a master asker. The, the mm. person that doesn't ask says, well, inwardly, I'm just saying whatever your relative is doing, and I'm not sure, but probably saying, I'm not worthy. And if I ask, they'll think I'm a dummy or, a, a, you know, or whatever. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough, tall enough, wise enough. I, I, they'll, they'll now know I'm a fool or whatever it is their issue is. You know, we're saying, look, we want to help you break that paralysis of analysis and go onward, upward, goodward, and Godward and see how far you can go to fulfill your destiny. Mm -hmm. And and they probably would. I don't know if it's an unworthiness, but it's a it's pride. I can go figure that out myself. Yes, you can go to the internet and figure out everything in theory, but why not talk to people too? Because you can figure out something just through talking to people that you can't figure out by just watching a YouTube. Despite I, I, us now sh having a YouTube. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I, I will Bailey jump story. them yeah. to Excusology. My older brother, who you're talking about, yeah, came here after he'd been gold digging up in Alaska. His wife had passed away. Had a great time with us. I'm taking him to the airport before early here in Phoenix, Arizona, where we live. I get to the airport. I say, you know, the way through the airport, and because he is too prideful, he's a genius, but he was too prideful. He said, oh, I can always get through the airport. So I assume. We've been living in airports, quarter million miles a year for 44 years. Yeah. So you sort of think everybody else knows their way through. He did not. I call in the afternoon to his daughter and I say, Jody, how's dad? Your dad. And he says, you didn't hear? He said in your Phoenix airport, 13 hours. I said, what? I asked him, do you know how to get to the gate? And, and because he wouldn't ask me and he wouldn't ask one of, as you know, we got purple anybody. coats here, wouldn't ask the purple coat, wouldn't ask a flight attendant, wouldn't ask a captain walking around, wouldn't ask anyone. He gets to his gate late, he's late, he ends up getting pneumonia, has all kinds of problems that he, because he took him 13 hours longer to fly because he had to communicate and change. And, and mm -hmm. it was because I didn't realize his wife, who was great and we loved her, but she passed away, would grab his hand and drag him through the airport. Oh. It didn't dawn him. I never watched him go through airport behavior. We just always show up oh. at reunions and family experiences. You get to the airport, I pick you up. I drop you off, you go on your way. I thought. Oh, wow. That just still, breaks my heart. Perfect. That's so sad. Right. Because, you know, but it's such a classic example of what people really do in their lives. He's completely lost. He's completely confused, even though he's a smart guy. He's going to miss out, you know, on something important, his flight. And he still is too stubbornly proud to ask. And this is He it. has this this feeling and a lot of, I think this is with a lot of men, but it can be with women too, but mm -hmm. they just, you know, nope, I don't need help. I can figure this out, you know, to that, that stubborn pride mm. that won't like reach out to someone and think of the, the opera, the cost. So the cost that day was like, wow, what a way to wreck your day. And then because he had been up in Alaska, he had been getting that, he had like something going on. And then it turned into pneumonia by the time mm. he got home. And it's so sad. Like, yeah, but it made Mark look at his life, his whole life, and realize how that stubbornness was always there. Like he could have avoided so many problems. Yeah, yeah. And and is that this? Do you think stubbornness? So I get stubbornness and pride. Um, if, is it? And I get the fear of like fear of looking stupid, right? In that particular case, um, pattern paralysis. Um, and can you tell me what that is? Like, what what's that mean? Yeah. You know, pattern paralysis is just where you're, you're doing something in your life, you know, whether it's business or relationships, and it, it didn't work last week or last month or last year, and it's not going to work next week, next month or next year, but you fail to look at it and question, question it, question the pattern. Mm -hmm. So you're just so stuck in your pattern that is not working, whatever it is. Mm -hmm but you refuse to even look at it, question it, inquire about it, right? Mm -hmm. And you've seen that with, with so, so many people. I know you know people like that. I know. Oh, I am that person. I mean, for, for in, in this case of, I just, I have this kind of workaholic kind of scenario. So I work, 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 and then go, well, you totally lost connection to spirit while you were working so hard. 
how did that happen? And each time I'm getting better, but it's like, here I go again, (laughs) but luckily I get better. Yeah. And, and you are, you are aware enough CJ to question it. Right. So there are so many people who never question it. Yeah. Just, and they're miserable. They can be miserable in whether it's a relationship, a job, whatever it is, mm. their career. But mm. it's like the same pattern that they're contributing to. Yeah. They're part of it. They're an integral part. They <laughs> might be most of it, right? Most right. of it usually comes from us. Yeah. But they're just paralyzed by this pattern. They yeah. won't stop. That yeah. Old cartoon. I met the problem. It's me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I love clients because I'll I'll talk to clients. I'm like, yeah, I see a pattern here, and they're like, really? And I'll say yes. I see, and then they'll go, oh, like <laughs> their jaws will drop open. It's like, yeah. I mean, it seems almost obvious because you've been telling a story over and over again, and I hear another pattern of the same story, slight different people, but similar pattern. I love it. Okay, and then how about? unworthiness people feel unworthy to ask a question or is that what's that they do so it's like you're standing in the room with the perfect guy the perfect man or woman Mm. or something opportunity and you you want to go up and you're about to do it and just something's holding you back oh no i don't want to bug them i know that no but Mm. you know and it's kind of they why would they want to talk to me they might think i'm not you know it's this little sense of unworthiness that so many people carry and don't even know when we start talking about this to people, they're like, oh man, that's me. You know, mm-hmm. I, in this guy, it was interesting on a really powerful podcast. I'm not going to say his name. He's like, I see myself doing that. He goes, now that you mentioned that I'm actually afraid. He's like, my wife will say at a restaurant, just go ask him where we are in line. And he's like, I, I, I won't do it. I feel so like unworthy to go ask him. Like, He's like, it's the most bizarre thing now that you bring it up, but it's this childhood conditioning. You know, we, we pick up this stuff from our child, mm. you know, mm-hmm. and because we all come into this world as these perfect little uncorrupted askers who aren't afraid to ask for anything. First of all, we're like wildly curious, right? We want to mm-hmm. know who, what, when, where, why, how, and then we're not, we, we always ask for more, like, okay, I more, I want more, you know? We're not afraid. We 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 know that we deserve the best when we come mm-hmm. into this world. Mm-hmm. And then depending on how we were parented, what happened in our school years, you know, stop asking. I'm tired of hearing you. Sit down. Don't ask unless you're called upon, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. no one values your opinion at work and life rejects you. And, and suddenly you're standing there as a full-grown adult, like afraid to ask, terrified oh, to ask wow. anyone anything, right? Yeah. And, and also like ashamed that you don't have all the answers yes. so you go back in in situations where you maybe you could shine maybe you could connect maybe you could bond but you don't because you know you're just oh afraid. yeah they don't want to talk to me why would they want to hear what i have to say so it's like this <laughs> yeah it's like the the unworthiness or doubt or why would they want to talk to me like my husband my you know, you have, you're the leading person in this. Why wouldn't they want to talk to you? And he's like, well, I mean, they didn't ask me. And it's like, well, <laughs> you need to ask them. yes, <laughs> you need to ask them. I know. I don't have, I don't, I don't think I have this issue as much. Um, <laughs> not asking is not seems to be one of my problems. I have other problems. So, um, <laughs> But I love some of the questions that you'd mentioned in terms of your self inquiry, like, am I doing the right thing? Is this my mission? Am I doing it in a humble way or not? Am I doing it to please myself or to please God? That was an interesting question. Tell me a little bit about the genesis of that. Okay. So when we wrote the book, we worked on the title forever, but it says a bridge from your dreams. All of us have dreams. We're talking about what do you desire? What do you want to achieve to your destiny? We're saying our research proves everyone was born and coded at birth with a destiny to do something important, something great, some record breaking, some history making. Now, you can say anything you want, but you got to find your own destiny. And all we're doing is saying, read the book. And what we're discovering is one and one equals the power of 11. Two people of like minds get together. They form a third new invincible mastermind it's called Mm -hmm. and we're saying hey look go over every one of the 179 questions in the book we're we're not here pushing what you're supposed to do your inner being your inner knower i mean christ said the kingdom of heaven is within 
right? So God, the God in you has the coding, but if somebody doesn't ask you and you don't ask them, you'll never find it. And then once you figure out what it is you want, you've got to put it in writing because we're all instant forgetters. Oh no, I'll never forget that. And tomorrow you go, what, in our, in our case, the book business, what was that title we had? No, no, we, 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 get, we get, God gives you a great title, but it's like a wet, slippery fish, man. You better gaff that thing immediately and not let it go. Like we've been deep sea fishing and it's great fun, but they'll jump off the boat if they get a chance. They want to stay there. Same with a good title. The title goes, adios, Mark and Crystal. You're so cool. You don't get that title because you didn't smart enough to write down. So we write down everything. Yeah. If anything, yeah. we're a little uh, obsessed to do so. Do you, do you ever write? I actually have been reading through. I actually have I've had a year's worth of transmissions that I've had over the last year. And, you know, where I write and I, I try to do it every day, but don't do it every day. You know, like roughly like a couple of times a month I'm, re I'm writing. So I was reading through a, a, a year's worth of these transmissions oh, and, and two, two things occur. One is like, I'm brilliant. Do you ever read your stuff and go, <laughs> I'm so good. Yes. Yes. How did I get this brilliant? <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're saying that and admitting it because I do. I go back and read my books or read my writings. And I'm like, that is amazing. I know. Really? Did I write that? <laughs> so, you know, it's true because we're all connected to higher right. source. And so when we allow ourselves to be absorbed and you get in, the writer's mind is the same as the artist high or the runner's high. You get out of your analytical, you know, beta wave brain um, and you go into kind of that alpha state and you're really sort of channeling a yeah. lot of information that's available. All the wisdom of the world is available to all of us. We're part of it. We're part of it. And so when we feel inadequate, you know, it's, it's just, it's just these limitations and these these roadblocks we've put on ourselves. Yeah. When we, the more we take this journey and start to seek and connect, the more we'll realize, oh my gosh, look how brilliant I am. Because <laughs> you can literally connect to everything out yeah. there everyone's a genius yeah world. and it's not even me like i know the stuff that i'm writing i'm like how did that even come up like how did <laughs> how did this even emanate out of my fingers onto the page i have no idea right i totally know what you're saying you're like wow where did that come from? and it does yeah. it's coming because you're connecting you're connecting yeah. to that higher source that we all have access to and it's the coolest thing so we need to get rid of our roadblocks, work on this stuff, take the journey, keep asking. And it's like so fun that it, it just starts to open you up to anything. Yeah, because the roadblocks are self-crippling. Whereas what you're saying is if you wake up and I don't know your 52 questions, but the question we ask in the book, obviously, is what is my genius and what is my talent that I'm supposed to use for the whole world? And like I wrote in my One Minute Millionaire book, which is a rock and bestseller, you know, I said there's everybody should be a millionaire. There's one right, perfect, easy, acceptable way for you. Somebody had to make the light bulbs, the screen, the zoom, this the thing, the fan. Uh, everybody can't do real estate. Everybody can't write books, which we're going to talk about at the very end of the show. I can show you a new way that you can. So uh, everybody can't make a cell phone like Steve Jobs did and now Elon Musk has. Somebody's got to make textiles. I mean, there's okay. So, what are your? Tell me what your what your genius is. When you woke up this morning, or when you've done this most late recently, is it the same thing? Is it different? For me, when I do it, I get different things each time. But what what do you get as your kind of thematic ideas? First of all, I love that word thematic. <laughs> uh, first of all, I got some stacked genius, but obviously there's some levels of me that's a genius writer. Not that I don't have critics, but that's just the is. I love speaking, communicating, doing these Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. I love seeing more in the people I talk to than they see in themselves, no matter whether they're young or they're old. I, I love having deep reservoirs of friendships. Talk, you know, I, I wrote a line a long time ago in one of my money books, your net work creates your net worth. I got over 4,800 people that I really know. They're not superficial. These are wow. people I can call and I, I need yeah. something. I can say, tell me what the truth is of X, mm. whether it's, you know, a drug or whether it's, you know, a way wow. to get well or whether it's how to be more anti-aging. Because as you know, last time we did a show, I said, I'm 74 a couple of days ago, but I'm going to live to be 127 with options for renewal. 
Because if you have a high quality of life, you want a high quantity. But mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff we ask ourselves. Is this working? And, and you know, most people don't know whether the life's working or not. And I got to work every day. I come home, crush beer cans on my hand, right. throw them toward the fireplace, and I'm done. No, 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 no. That isn't a really good idea. <laughs> How about you, Crystal? What's yours? So I think my superpower, one of it, my superpowers is really, um, I'm very in intuitive. Mm -hmm. So when I'm immersed in, you know, stuff we're doing, our business, people, I see a really clear path to make everything work really well. And even I can see the players, I can see every people's strengths and weaknesses. I can see them so clearly. And I see people like, like I, I can see their talents. I know their mm -hmm. best, you know, so I can help them help foster their best, but mm -hmm. also correct them lovingly. Cause it's like, it's hard to hide anything from me. <laughs> it's like, because I just see the truth really well. And I see right. when, when like structurally, organizationally, we're messing up. And so, um, yeah, it's just this kind of sort of weird talent. I, I mean, um, even if when we've had like legal issues in the past, I can see like the clear path, the, the lawyers like rely on me to sort of direct the whole case. Because, Interesting. Yeah. You're an alchemist. Someone said, actually, I was just reading on uh, about integral leadership and I was asking the question myself, like I know I've been nominated for all these things about leadership throughout my life and I don't even, even consider myself a leader. I don't even understand it, but it's still the way that, I don't know, people give me things for it. <laughs> <laughs> recognize me <laughs> but but it's it's that kind of leadership right where you just you're you know you go in you're like I kind of know what to do let's you just do. do it and you organize people to make it happen but it's and I was just talking to someone about it yesterday and uh they were talking about integral leadership and um the term written by I can't remember the name of the author was alchemist is someone who comes in and does oh, like gigantic transformation yeah that's yeah. what it sounds like that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that, that is exactly right. And that's what had to every time we start a company or do something, that's what ends up happening because each of the players, like they have their own talent and their own, you know, whatever um, issues. And we all do, but it's like none of them can, can see it. They see their own thing, but I can kind of see them all and see yeah. the, finished, the finished product, how it needs to flow and how it will flow as long as we do these things and understand each other. And it always has to operate from the highest truth and integrity. So if mm. those things need some like polishing, you know, I make sure that everyone's clear about that. CJ, without saying anybody's names, let me just brag on my beloved, brilliant, <laughs> I think she's the wisest woman I've ever met. Thanks. Yeah, we're a any, good any, team. Yeah, we're, we're, a good we're team. really you team. are a, a, adorable beyond belief. I just Thank want you. to They're like capture your essence, put it in a vial, and put it on me every day. <laughs> God bless you, CJ. Ode to Crystal and Mark. Ode to Crystal Mark. Or does Ode mean adios, Crystal Mark? Exactly. So, so, it's we're, so, so good. We're on, we're on a, a charity that'll go unnamed. I've worked so many charities, you couldn't figure this out, but. They, they were in LA, the politicians were trying to steal this company's building. And we had, they had $1,000 an hour lawyers, five of them on the phone. And Crystal said, no, 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 wait, wait, guys, this, 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 this. First this. conversation I ever had. And suddenly and I'm like she, a, a consultant. With she them. saw $5,000 worth of solution. And they said, how did you see that? Because yeah. most of them had been taught to think so linearly. And, and remember, in graduate school, I'm, I'm the top comprehensivist of all time. We, my, one of the degrees is comprehensive anticipatory design type, but she's intrinsically comprehensive. Her father was a comprehensive, a yeah. top lawyer in, in Idaho with Learjet yes. and Rolls Royce and all that, but and an amazing human being who I love. And she obviously loved one of nine kids, yeah. but she saw the, the hole that these guys, no one could see it. And it, this major charity, major, major charity, was about to lose this and they'd had it for 28 years or whatever. And, and the government's just being obnoxious and stupid. And then all of a sudden she saw the whole, and they said, 
oh, they can't do that, can they? Go, nope, they can't do it. Well, and it was even deeper than that because they'd had, they'd hired, retained a law firm in LA. Then they had their in-house lawyer working on it and they were just dom de dom dom And I'm like, no, that's, this is not right. That's, this is, this is this and that's that. And this is how you're, do not, they were, the lawyer was telling them, yeah, you better just move out of the building, you know? And then we don't want to get in that kind of battle. I'm like, absolutely not. And then I said, do not move. You will never get the building back ever. You will lose. This is your building. I promise you stay there, ignore these requests. I started digging into it and I just got right down to the truth all the way down to, I looked at the records that all the attorneys had had this entire time. Mm. And the city council had actually voted. To, I found the actual day in the meeting when the city council had voted to give the building to child health because they'd already, after 20 mm. years, oh, I shouldn't say, okay, <laughs> um, 20 years of, of complying with the requirements of the city, mm. um, that was what they were suppo- supposed to do. And like, all these attorneys were so stumped by this. And I'm like, no, here's the path. And so I had to like <laughs> direct them all. It's just crazy. Like, the, yeah, the, the founders of the organization are putting me on to lead the calls with the attorneys. <laughs> How does this happen? I just, we just uh, I on. totally can see it. I get, I totally, I see it. I get it. It makes total sense to me. I'm, I'll, I'll have to send you this article on the alchemist because it when you describe it it's it's that one percent of kind of person who leads in that particular way so and yeah you're that kind of person too i yeah. am that kind of person yeah, too they were like when things are a mess or like they bring me in and i'm like what how am i going to figure oh well, actually here's what you need to do <laughs> right because right, the minute you the minute you put your attention on it you are into like you just know and it's and you yeah. kind of think you kind of go how could they not know it's it becomes so obvious to you right it becomes yeah. so clear like the direction yeah. and, and there's just no question because you you page towards toward truth i feel like my mind heart and spirit page just right toward the truth and so it becomes really easy for me to see and i'm thinking how can they not see this <laughs> i the, the love richest it richest guy of all times when god asked solomon Okay, big guy, uh, what do you want? And, you know, most people are going to want, I want wealth, I want riches. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, 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 I want wisdom. And then he said, well, define wisdom. And, and God and he had this little conversation, it says wisdom is doing the right thinking to get the right result. Essentially, right now I'm adding one line. But the, the fact is, is that you got to know what he said is what's right and what's wrong. And most people have never done that ethical analysis in themselves, so they can't mm-hmm. see it out here. We spend our time back to your question about 80 questions ago, you know, in our prayer meditation and, and, and collaborative thinking, is it what is the highest level of rightness, which is what mm-hmm. the blind justice is supposed to be about? Mm-hmm. What's well, so you true. are on your path because questions are the only way to lead you to your highest amount mm-hmm. of good and to yeah. your destiny, as I said earlier. All right, I want to talk to you in the last five minutes about your um, your your library that's coming out. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, I'm going to wax on poetically for a minute, but <laughs> as world's best-selling <laughs> author, according to Guinness Book of Records, I keep getting, everybody comes up and whispers, I got a book in me. So I wrote a whole book called, I have a book in me. I don't have it to show now, but they can go look it up and get it. But then you have all a the, book in you. Yeah, you have a book in you. <laughs> it, it, you know, and I said, the best book hadn't been written because you haven't written it. And right. Then what is really true, because we looked at all those stories in Chicken Soup, 98% of the people can't write in what is called sticky. In other mm. words, sticky means you start reading one of our books and you go, oh my gosh, I can read this thing. I can't go to sleep tonight until I finish this. Mm-hmm. Whether it's ours or whether it's a novel by Clive Cusser or, or Rawlings or whomever you like and love. And, and I follow lots of people. Mm. And, and I expect anybody that's a good reader does. And same for spiritual stuff we could talk about. So we said, well... I, I'm a niche marketer. I wrote the, a book with the world's greatest marketing long copy guy who's got exactly the same birthday as me. We were born on the same day. We're the same age, have parties together. Yeah. And it's called Grow Rich in Your Niche, Jay Abraham. And, and we're great friends forever. But but I, I, I look for the niche. And the niche is last year during the height of COVID, fiction books sold $47 billion. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I said, holy cow, 
these guys came to us and, and we started the Mark Victor Hansen library.com. We ghost books for people. And in six months we've finished 49 books and we've got somewhere like a hundred in the queue because Wait, every- who's this? Just the two of you are doing this? No, or? no, we have, have a, a team staff. Writers. Okay. Got we it. Have a really okay. brilliant, brilliant <laughs> team of writers. Right. It, is a, it is a precious team. Yeah. So you do ghost writing for people. Yeah, do we ghost writing Because write. people come with a great idea but they really don't have enough to fill a book. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's a craft and a skill to be able to write and to fill a whole book. Mm. And so there's no reason not to move forward if you have a good idea, even if you can't write the whole book. We, know, mm-hmm. we help people through that process and it's been so much fun. Brilliant. You know, I've been with seven major publishers. I mean, Random House gave me a million dollars before I did One Minute Million or Cash and a Flash you know, millionaire code, all those kind of books. And they sold like crazy, 3,600,000 are still selling. So we are sticky. I am sticky. And, and people that love Mark, uh, you know, read me. People that love Crystal keep reading all the stuff. She's got lots of stuff. Point is that nobody, it, now we went to novels and we can do any kind of book people want. And I believe everybody Ooh. ought to write their biography and autobiography because wouldn't it be nice to know what your grandparents, great, great grandparents did, said, thought, felt, Mm-hmm. And unless somebody does it, so we say we'll take dictation and everything. But we start by interviewing the purple people. What is it you want to communicate to what audience? What are the principles? What are the philosophies? And then the first thing we do is a title. Because every publisher, normal publishers, does, well, when you finish writing the book, we'll come up with a title. Wrong. Mm-hmm. So we've got these killer titles that if you go to markvictoransonlibrary.com, you'll see the best titles ever. And, and then we do the cover. We start the cover before we start the book and the people- Isn't have that great? It's like a vision and like, yeah. The vision, the guiding light, right? It totally makes sense chapters to in me. my book yeah. says start at the end. That's the first chapter. Well, yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. If you don't know where you're going, it's pretty hard to get there. You need a GPS that says, I want to go over to CJ's house or CJ's office or whatever. Then the mm-hmm. GPS goes, and you get right. there. So then we write the first 10,000 words and they have to sign off on that. Once they okay that every week, uh, a chapter is written and they got to sign off on it and then it goes to another writer and we get the best metric matrix matrix of writers in history and we know exactly what they can, can they do science fiction can they do mystery can they do novels wow, and they do Art. editing for it nobody wow. because wow. He, here's it breaks my heart to say this but we've gone from in two years from nineteen thousand yeah. bookstores there's only 400 left yeah. and the book people have been it made me a really rich man and I love every one of them and, and we've hugged them and kissed them and enjoyed them and <laughs> laughed with them and partied with them and and you know random house laid off eight thousand people this isn't okay oh, with me yeah. I mean this is these are these are great people who've worked hard who have mm. phenomenal talent so mm. all those people end up coming to us and saying you know can we work with you and we go wow we days are here again <laughs> you know? exactly yeah. thank you Lord. a lot of talent out there now let great. me do the one last thing, and that is when Hitler and, and all the, the tyrannists of all times, Mao and Stalin and Mussolini, the first thing they do is burn books. So I'm saying, what happens if we open up the world to create all this beautiful stuff? Because no one should die with their book in them, their music in them, their mm. invention in them, their business in them, their love in them, their joy in them, their potential kids in them, their families, their everything in them. And, you know, we've got to help people out. I love it. Okay, so p- is that a new service that you're offering? How do I how do we I find are, out more? So people people just go to markvictorhansonlibrary.com. So that's how to you know put in your inquiry, and uh, we'll we'll get right back to you and it. have a conversation about it. And um, and then of course get you know this is the important part is to really get the asking journey going for anyone yes. who hasn't done it. Yeah. It's on Amazon, of course. And ask the bridge from your dreams to your destiny. For your partner. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have it, but I have, I have the questions for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter. I have the questions embedded inside of me. <laughs> that's right. We also are doing a free webinar, um, CJ. So if anyone who wants to come, um, go to ask the book club.com after you ask get the book. book. Okay. Go to askthebookclub.com and ask for an invitation and to the free webinar. I love it. Thank you so much, guys. It's just been such a delight. You're so, just so cute, the two of you. <laughs> I just, <laughs> ah! it's so, so cute. cute. You're so cute. We have fun being on it. your show. Thanks for You're having us awesome. back yeah, a second time. We must yes, have done exactly. okay. Thank you so much, guys.